Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we'll start off from where we left in the previous video. So we'll start with the point we talked about in the last video, which was about shells. We have already discussed about the yolk and the white part of an egg. And we also just gave an overview of what is in about shell. So the shell consists mainly of the calcium carbonate and other um, following contains. And we'll discuss about in detail the layers of shells and what it is importance for an egg to have a shell. So with this, so as you can see, so this cute, uh, so the shell is divided into three main categories, which is one is the inner layer, and then we have the spongy layer, and then the third layer, which is the cuticle layer, the hard, hardermost layer, which covers the entire egg. So the cuticle layer or the outermost layer blocks the pores and protects the egg against the outside contamination entering the egg. Also thousands of pores run throughout these layers of the shell with a greater number at the larger end. Also a shell is naturally porous for a potentially developing chick inside. So as you know, so the outer cuticle is very important for preventing contamination because the other two layers are not very hard and therefore it contains pores which may allow exchange of gases. So it may allow entry of oxygen which allows growth of microorganisms. So to prevent the growth of microorganisms and prevent the spoilage of egg, the outer cuticle must be preserved. So the cuticle blocks the uh, pores and protects the egg against outside contamination. So that's the simple function of the outermost cuticle. So also the second point it says that so as a result of the pores, CO2 and moisture losses occur and oxygen enters the shell. So initially because of the outermost layer, it contains carbon dioxide as well as moisture, which helps the egg to remain contamination free and can have a bigger life, bigger shelf life. So as the outer cuticle gets dissolved with time due to some activities or due to washing or any other activity, yeah, the CO2 gets replaced with oxygen and therefore it prefers growth of microbes inside the egg and thus contaminates the egg. So this shell also protects as a barrier against harmful bacteria and mold entry. So as a protein layer of keratin partially seals the shell pores. So the outer layer contains keratin which seals the pores that are present inside so which prevents the contamination so the third point that we have is the sweating or moisture condensation on this shell may produce stains the presence of animal droppings also may stain however simply washing is not recommended as it may remove the shell's outer cuticle lining or open its pores resulting in a diminished shelf life also, once the outside protection is violated, microorganisms from the outside can travel to the inside contents and contaminate the egg. So this is a very simple point. So these are some of the preventive measures that we must take to help contain the outermost layer and not wash it. So to prevent washing the egg with water will help to contain the outermost layer and also removing the animal drops or keeping at a place where uh, there is less chance of animal droppings so that the outer layer is prevented from getting washed away and thus contamination is prevented. So, with this. so talking about the next component of an egg which is the color. So the eggshell color depends on the breed of hen and has no effect on egg flavor or quality including the nutritive quality of the egg contents. So the eggshell color depends on the breed of egg. Also, the white legon hens are the chief breed for egg production in the United States and they produce white shells. And upon a closer look, it is significant that this white leghorn breed of hen has white ears under their feathers. So, and some of the eggs such as brown eggs are popular in some regions of the United States with some individuals. Also, their eggs are slightly larger, uh, are from la slightly larger birds which require more food and they are not as prevalent as white shell eggs. And there are the reasons because brown eggs are usually more expensive than whites. 
So here we see some sort of classification between white eggs and brown eggs. So brown eggs are, uh, do occur in hens as well, but there is a limited breed that produces brown egg. And we mostly see white eggs in case for hen's egg. And we may observe brown eggs in case of uh, birds, including ostrich or some other bird, which produces a slightly bigger egg than the normal hen's egg because a bird requires more food. That is why the egg size is bigger. And, be, and it is uh, definitely not very much prevalent. And the white brown eggs are not very much found everywhere. So the reason that is why it is very much expensive than the normal white egg. So moving on with that. So the brown eggs are produced from a different breed of hen than white eggs. Notably hens with reddish brown ears such as Rode Island, red hens, Plymouth rod, rock hens and New Hampshire breeds. Also, uh, the brown eggs are more difficult to classify by cattling as to interior quality than our white eggs. So cattling is a process by which we, they scan the contents of egg so as to identify which eggs are good and which eggs are uh, defected. Alright, so cattling is a process by which we throw light on the eggshell so that we can see the contents from outside without breaking the egg. So brown eggs are more difficult to classify by cattling whereas it is easier for white eggs. And in, in addition to the white and brown eggs, some eggs shells are bluish and greenish. So depending on the breed, the eggshell color varies. So next we come to the yolk color. So the yolk color depends on the feed given to the egg. So whatever the hen eats, the color comes out from there. So mainly the yolk may be a deep yellow pigment due to the presence of carotene, xanthophyll and lycopene in the feed. So generally we see yolks are yellow in color because of the feed they are given. Uh, due to the pigment present is uh, carotene, xanthophyll and lycopene in the feed. So moving on with this. So talking about some of the abnormalities, abnormalities of an egg structure and composition. So some of the abnormalities in the structure and composition of egg may be detected with or without candling and consumers with first hand experiences may be familiar with some of these abnormalities. So the USDA sites, some of the abnormalities here are double yolk egg, so which are the ones when two yolks are released from the ovary about the same day or when one yolk is lost into the body cavity and picked up when the ovary releases the next day yolk. So this is some sort of default that may occur. This is a very rare chance when we see a doubled yolk egg. So this is the time we see two yolks in a single egg uh, due to which uh, uh, they, we call it some sort of an abnormality which happens due to uh, the two the yolk remains in the body cavity and delays in the body cavity of the hens and gets uh, uh, pops out on the release of the next ovary date. So this is one of the abnormality that we see is the double yolk egg. Next we come to the yolkless egg which does not contain even a single yolk. So it is usually formed around a bit of the tissue that is locked off of the ovary or oviduct. So this tissue stimulates the secretory glands of the oviduct and the yolkless egg results. So this is a very rare condition same so because this is in this case we do not find a yolk so it may happen due to the uh, damaged cause due some of the tissues in the oviduct or the ovary due to which the yolk formation does not take place so next we have is the yolk within an egg so this is uh, uh, this is caused due to so the one day's egg is reversed in the direction by the wall of the oviduct and is added to the next day's egg and the shell is formed around both. So, so an egg within an egg. So you can see a formation of two eggs in a single egg. So it happens due to one egg is a, so the particular day's egg that is that needs to be hatched is reversed in the direction by the wall of the oviduct and it is added to the next day's egg that will be hatched. So therefore we get two eggs and particularly that time a shell is formed around both the eggs. So we get an egg within an egg. So that is a very rare abnormality as well. And next we have is the blood spots 
which is the rupture of one or more small blood vessels in the yolk follicle at the time of ovulation, although chemically and nutritionally they are fit to eat. So that is it for the egg part. I'll be back with another video very soon. So if you like the video, please press the like button and share it with your friends. And I'll be very much back with another video very soon. And thanks for watching. Thank you.